It was time to leave our trampoline of death camp. We decided to keep making tracks south towards the border. We came across this little lady on our way down the mountain. I think she has a red brocket deer. Apparently, they are pretty elusive. Although I don't think she got that memo. Whenever we would meet up with another vehicle like this, it was just a matter of who had a better option to get off the road. Or sometimes who was bigger. So as we drove, we were always taking note of any place that might make a good pullout. We did a lot of waiting and backing up on the way down. I was picturing this road very differently in my head. It has a big scary name, but in reality the road is pretty mellow. In fact, we have found ourselves on much sketchier roads many a time. The worst part of this road is the traffic. And in the morning, it was even busier than the afternoon before, which made for a stressful drive. Lots of trucks. At least the truck drivers are generally pretty good drivers, although you can tell some of them have run this route often and seem like they might be a little too comfortable with it. The motorcyclists can get away with pretty much anything as they don't have to worry about fitting. The taxi drivers drive a lot, but aren't particularly good drivers, <laughs> and most other locals seemed mildly terrified just to be behind the wheel of a vehicle. So overall, the road wasn't the scary part, but it was the people driving it. In the end, I much prefer finding our own sketchy forgotten roads without all the traffic. But you never know until you try. We made it off the mountain alive and came across this little campground right off the road and above a big river. It was a good stopping point on our way to the border, so we pulled in and tried to wind down after the day's stressful drive. Turns out we didn't realize how beat we actually were, and we ended up staying here for a few days. It was exactly what we needed. It's raining. A lot. A lot, a lot. And this isn't even the rainy season, but it's been raining for like two days, almost nonstop. Uh, so we just decided to hang out and do after a day. Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, this whole area is just, everything has a flower, everything has some sort of fruit that grows on it. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. It's, but, watered, it's watered well by the rain. Yeah. <laughs> so I think uh, in the morning we will head for the border, see if we make it all the way there. I don't know what the road's going to be like or how long it'll take exactly. So. We may or may not cross the border to into Ecuador tomorrow. And that's all I know. We see tons of crazy Frankenstein vehicles as we travel. This one was the top half of an old bus that had been totally modified and plopped on a flatbed. I always love seeing the ingenuity and creativity. <laughs> Thank you.
We try to hit the smaller border crossings when we can, and this one was pretty off the beaten path. The road turned to dirt, and we were glad we had good suspension. We try to arrive at the borders as early in the day as possible, to hopefully beat the infamous lunch breaks of Latin America. Unfortunately, with the road conditions here, it took us a little longer to get to the border than anticipated, so we were able to check out of Colombia without any drama, and then we carried on to the Ecuadorian border. And guess what? It was lunchtime. So we stood around waiting in line for about two hours until anyone was back from lunch. And even though this was a pretty small crossing, it took us the longest of the trip so far, because we hit it right at about noon. Although I didn't get any video of it, this border was flooded with Venezuelans fleeing their country and trying to get into Ecuador. UNICEF had sleeping accommodations, bathrooms, and other services for all the refugees set up. Eventually, we did make it into Ecuador, much later than we had been anticipating, and now it was time to find a place to sleep before the sun set on us. We ended up using iOverlander to find a little swimming pool that allowed travelers to stay overnight. It wasn't anything special, but the owners were very nice, and it was a safe place to sleep after a long day. The next morning we were up early. We were excited to check out this new country. So after watching these little chicks have their breakfast, we hit the road, taking it all in as we drove. Everything was so beautiful. It's odd when you cross a border how everything is seemingly just a little different. The terrain, the people, the food. Ecuador for sure had a different vibe and we were loving it. Eventually, we stopped to eat lunch, and where we stopped, there was a bridge going over a river. On the other side, we could see an excavator working to rebuild the road, which looked like it had been washed away in a flood of the river at some point. We figured since we hadn't seen a lot of tracks off the little road we had been driving on, this might be a promising option for a camp spot. So across the river and into the rainforest, we went. I like this clip because it gives you a feel for how we find the places we camp. Simply trial and error a lot of the time. We are willing to take the time to check out the area. In this case, the lower road we tried went to a dam nearby. So we turned around and tried the next option. And off of that, there was another little road, which with the rain was way too slick and narrow to get up. So after a three point turn, we went a little ways back down the hill to check out the final road and eventually decided on the best spot. We don't always get lucky, but doing a little bit of scouting around an area gives us at least a good feel for it. Once we settled on our spot, we decided to hike up the slick, narrow little road. Turns out it was a dead end, but it had some pretty cool views and plants to check out. Making water, rather purifying water. <laughs> the next morning, we were greeted by this beautiful little butterfly. We took it as a sign that today would be a good one. It was time to head back across the bridge and see what else Ecuador had in store for us. That's all I know. Hey guys, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoy our adventure. <laughs> I wanted to let you know about a few free ways that you can help support us. Um, first is shopping with our Amazon affiliate linked below. <laughs> and uh, just do your regular shopping. There's no cost to you, but we get a little cut of that and that's super helpful. And the biggest way to help support us is just by liking and sharing our video with your friends. And if you haven't already, subscribe. And um, 
yeah, we really appreciate all of your support, the comments. They really inspire me to keep uh, creating these videos for you guys. Unagi. Uh-huh, unagi. 